What's up? What's up? And welcome. This is the 500 and 556 Songbreaker episode number 556-ish. What I'm working on today is the outro. This is a spoiler stream. I'm spoiling stuff. So maybe you're somebody in the future that's like watching this YouTube video. You've already played Songbringer. You already know how the end is. And now you're like, hmm, I wonder how that was made. It's, uh, maybe that's how it's going down. What's up, Gene? Hello, man. So I've kind of cobbled together two. This is the, the outro is going to work a bit differently than the intro. The intro is a bunch of scenes that are all pixel art that just parallaxes, basically just layers of pixel art. Um, but I've been using a lot more of in-game cutscenes to tell a story towards the end of the game. So I really want to do this where um, you beat the game and it shows you like three old areas you've already been to where uh, the smith was and basically just catches you up on all the characters. It shows that, you know, it shows the the heroes that are still alive um, and stuff like that, basically, and what they're doing at the end of the game after everything's already finished. So it kind of leaves you with a sort of reassurance, like, oh, these characters I've grown to love, these ones are still alive, you know, or whatever. So it fills you back up with a little bit of hope because there's a lot of intensity and, like, and questions and things like that towards the climax of the plot. And this is where it's like, all right, cool. Now let's have a little nice extended conclusion. So what I was saying there was um, I've kind of cobbled together those two different approaches to doing cutscenes. One is the showing the in-game, and the other is showing just the pixel art parallaxed cutscenes. So um, I've got these like I got it so it can do that in general, but there's some bugs. So there's a bug where the screen, the background turns black. I don't know why. And the levels are at the are too bright all of a sudden. So, but anyways, I'll be fixing those right now on today's stream. So let's take a look at what I was just talking about there, about the areas, the background turning black and all that. So you can, it's too bright already messed up with the levels there in a second. Now, now the background turns black. Alright, so, yeah. First things first, I know I just worked on that those levels, so I can go back and find whatever I messed up there with the levels. In fact, probably a good thing to do is just to look at my last check-in. Or actually, my my uncommitted changes. Uh. Okay, that's phase open begin. So instead of doing set levels, set outdoorness, set lightness, set dirt color, set watercolor. Oh, I forgot to add that back in right there. That's phase open. Oh man, hopefully I found this already. Gotta go back to phase open. What's up, T? What's up, Pixel Jump? Yeah. Yep, I'm the artist. I'm also 
Yours truly, I am a musician as well. Today's programming though, today I'm doing some programming for the outro. And this is a spoiler alert stream. I'm doing spoily things. Oh, here we go. So I forgot to add back in render system set attributes. Now we don't need this. Why, thank you. Okay, so hopefully that fixed the levels issue. Um, so the technique I'm using here to skip, so there's a long, long ending scene here that I'm just skipping over so I can jump straight to the outro. Because the outro is, um, it works uniquely because it goes into a cutscene phase but it's actually using the scene that you were already just in. So the area you were just in, it just adds in some letterboxing. So you kind of have to do at least some story element to trigger it into that. So I've got, I've just, you'll see it in here in a second, the characters just explode and it goes into the outro. So that's just like a scaffolding story element, you could say. Oh good, the levels didn't change. Awesome. Okay, so the levels are back to working. Oh, that's great. That means I can commit this this code and then start figuring out why the ground is all black. I have no idea why the ground is just totally black. Uh, yeah, well, um, I have been programming for about Oh, damn. Since 1994? What is it now? 2017? 23 years! Yeah, I've been a programmer for 23 years. I've been a musician since 2001, so that's about 16 years. And I've been an artist for the last about four years or so. I started making art. This is the first art I've ever made. So I'm I'm new to this. Cut me some slack. <laughs> um, let's make sure that's that commits all good. I can commit strings, but I can't commit this story ship thing. Right, so we're using set attributes. Here, we use set attributes. There, we didn't need wind size. Here, we're using set attributes again, but the custom lightness. This one is, oh, it's like how it goes in, oh, it's supposed to clear the, clear these effects once it's done with that stuff. Oh, right, yeah, and the, the game has been in development for three years. Sorry. Yeah, it's right. It was playable. Well, yeah. It's playable in the first few months, sort of. It had dungeons and an overworld and stuff. It was very simple, though. It's a lot, a lot more simple than it is now. All right, so there. I got to do this clear forever effects and clearing the atmosphere thing. Is this possible? It is possible. You deserve you did you deserve to be in like some kind of club. We need like the you've been you've been around and watching the stream for more than two years club. You'd you'd be the president of that club, T. You'd be able to like veto people and stuff. The pizza man, right?
Um. Yeah. Well, there's songbringer.com is probably a good place to start. And yeah, Botfu is dead right now. Um, what else? To read up about Songbringer? Um, not the TIG source. I never really made that much of a dev log. It's more just like a GIF log. What was I going to share with it? Well, you got it. Everything's at songbringer.com. This is the press kit. If you want to look at the press kit, that's got a lot of the project's history. The Kickstarter page, yeah, that shows like what it used to be like. It's all here at songbringer.com though. Like you've got a link to the press kit and this has lots of like history and stuff and feet, you know. All the articles that have been written about it. Um, yeah, and the Kickstarter page link is at the bottom of this too. So yeah, there's every every one of the links and important informations and everything is on songringer.com. Yeah, this summer. Yeah, it's finally coming out. Yeah. Okay, so this bit, it, it unpings the HUD, hides everything. Really, it should do this. Whatever you call next scene. Hold on. I'm starting to get in this bad habit where I start visually selecting everything in Vim. Okay, so better habits would be to delete eight lines down, go into the next scene. I want to do this for basically every scene. Set up the scene and then basically So we'll do a boolean like um, I'll do clear do clear effects. Pass that in. Oh yeah? What's the new project you're going to work on? Oh yeah, it's a 3D co-op? Well, cool.
Okay, so for all these scenes that I don't want it to clear the effects, now I can just turn off that. And then for the other ones, by default, they will clear effects. Wait a minute. I already hid the HUD, so I think you might need to unping the HUD after doing that. Okay, so hopefully this still works where um, it does its effects all, it does its fades correctly, and then it at the after it's, it starts to do the actual cutscenes, it turns off the atmosphere. And then I'll look at why the floors are all black. There's still atmosphere. Oh, the light is a, is a... There's still atmosphere here. Oh man, maybe there shouldn't be atmosphere actually, ever. This one it'll turn off the atmosphere. No, wait, the next one. Uh, we gotta put these letter boxes above um, the lights. Okay, yeah, there it got rid of that. Okay, so we definitely gotta get rid of those. Doesn't matter. I'm just gotta delete these each time. Nice, you made it a simple Android game. Cool, man. What's up, Red Saint? Welcome. So I got it now, so it turns off the atmosphere every time. Um, I need to change it, the frame rate because I'm streaming. Scotty's pissed. We're pushing it too too hard. She can't take him no more. <laughs> um, I do need to hue shift it though. The fog in the atmosphere. In this um scaffolding story cutscene. Nice, man. Good job. Oh, there you go. Sounds like a good plan. All right, so this time, this time what's different? All right, turns off the atmosphere. Oh, 
just hid the... Okay, oh, it's still below, too. So we gotta put those above the lights. Um, which is... Why are... Your letter boxes... Rocket Bunny, what's up? Let's go, Rocket. All right, there's where it does the letterbox. What's the Z? It's only 10. <laughs> Z10, that's it. Okay, so we need this to be like 10,001 to really be up high above everything else. No, I do not. I've only run it on a Mac before. Boo boo doo 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 doo. Okay, well, oh, it's still gonna. Okay, I just gotta get it so it fades out the. Oh, I put it above the text that time. Damn. So we do need a Z. Oh, an EP is shorter than an LP. EPs are typically like six to eight or nine tracks. LPs are typically like 10 tracks or more. It comes from the vinyl days where EP was a single-sided, I believe, uh, record and an LP was a double-sided record. I think that's how it was. Might want to check Wikipedia on that one, I don't know. Yes, I have. I've used PHP before. All right, so the, the fade layer. Is Z minus one. Letter boxes are Z plus one. The label, the text label is right at Z. Okay, and then each time it's killing the, it's like unpinging the HUD. What I wanted actually was to show HUD false. Ah, let's try this. Uh, no, I've not used ZAMP. I've used MAMP before on Mac. Shell plate, sonic plate. Strawberries Ard Bay. Ground egg? <laughs> That's cool. Really? Your word for strawberry is ground egg. Oh, that's great. It rained again. 
Uh, MAMP, it's a, the same thing with Mac, yeah. All right, let's see if this works this time. Okay, so it shouldn't um, kill the hit points or your teeth, the HUD. It should just fade out the HUD nicely. And what was the other thing? All right, yeah, yeah, cool. Good, good, and it's above the light. Yeah, it's above the light. Does the text work? Oh, the text still doesn't work. All right, so I gotta work on that. What's wrong with the text? I thought that was Z plus something something. Text label. Oh, it's just Z, and then the letterboxing is Z plus one. Oh, duh. So letterboxing is supposed to be Z. The text label is supposed to be Z plus one. Let's try that. Tommy Killer, what's up, man? Yeah, I'm getting really, really close to being done with Songbringer. Um, there'll still be like a whole another month of just refinement and stuff and making sure like uh, does can you get a hundred percent of all the items? Um, can you beat the game in reverse boss order? Um, can you beat the game without getting the sword? You know, all those things I've planned and I've promised. I want to make sure you can do all that stuff. Okay, come on, text. Uh, yes, we have text finally. All right, good. Okay, so I can check this in, and now I can look at why the floors are all black everywhere. It's really weird. All the ground is just gone. In fact, it's almost like there's a black layer. Wait, maybe there is a black layer. Maybe the fade layer is visible. Holy crap. I Why didn't I ever think of this before? I need to reset the fade layer. Let's try that. Reset fade layer. Well, I hope this is it. And then also, after you reset the fade layer, I think I have to set it invisible. But that will reset it and then also make it. Why can't I change it invisible? This is really, really weird. Oh, it's a pointer. PvP Kaif, what's up, man? Can I put you in the game? How do you mean? What do you mean by that? Do you wanna you want your own personal character in the game? Or are you talking about putting your name in the credits or what you mean? Yes, Teak. Um, I would say, um, give it like, yeah. Yes, this next month, April, I would say by mid-April, you'll be able to start speedrunning and it will pretty much be the right world. I would give it, I would pre pretty much give it till basically May 1st. Around May 1st, you'll, that the game will kind of be really just concrete. That will be Songbringer, basically. Nice, man. Oh, you got an Asus deal? Cool, man. All right, hopefully that worked to not set the ground black. I bet this is it. The fade, How did the fade layer get to be black, though? Oh, maybe it just never got set. Oh, what's happening? Oh, the fade layers? What? Oh, no, 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 no. Not that fade layer. I'm talking about the global fade layer. Wait a minute. Yeah, there's two fade layers? That's really bad. <laughs> I didn't know I did this. <laughs> is there a way to quickly generate maps for a couple seeds? Yes, there is. In the beta version. I believe you can do this. Wait, let me check, let me check. 
Can you do that? Let me just double check you that if you can or cannot. Okay, so I gotta change that fade layer. Let's do this here. Um let's in game where it does um overworld and it moves you into the overworld scene. Oh uh, no, you can't in the you can't in the Steam version. That's debug only. Uh, well, I've got this thing that can generate ma some of the maps, just the overworld, basically, and it just does like a, like a, you know, you've seen it before, I think, the overworld map debug thing. Do you want me to generate a few right now? How about, how about, give me three worlds right now that you want to see, and I'll send you some pings right now. Yeah. Yeah, it'll pre it'll be the same world. I already I already did all. Are you sure? Or just one world? Do you want to see one new world? Hey, you know what? Anytime, anytime you want to do this, let me know. I'm totally down. If you think of a world, you're like, okay, I really want to see. I want to see the world map for this world. I'll go do it right then. It's so easy for me to just change the, you know, change that and show that world seed, and then you can either take a screenshot or I can just send you the ping. Good question. Very good question. Part of me thinks this actually is a Mac that they kind of just customized. But then again, this font is very Linuxy. And so is this. Is this a trick question? They give you this background that looks very Mac-ish. You're like, oh, that's a Mac. It's got to be a Mac. Right, yeah. I'm glad, yeah. I didn't want there to be, that's why I did this with the debug only. I could make this debug or beta. Like, I could go like, actually, maybe I should, huh? Should I make this in the beta version? You can do these, you can make your own maps. You can run Songbringer and it will just immediately go to the map. Is it? Yeah, that's what it, I thought. <laughs> See, this would be fine. I could leave my code like this and make it basically make you able to run these overworld maps. Uh, you know what? Never mind. I'm not even going to think about this right now. I'm not going to think about this. If anybody wants a map, I will totally show you a map. Okay, so we reset the fade layer, set it visible, false. Ah, and that's doing this fade layer. So we need to change all these fade layers. Okay, phase cutscene. Phase cutscenes! Fade layer. It's a bad name for a variable because there's already a. You know what? Uh, should I rename the main flux? No, I don't want to do that. Okay, that should be all of what we need to change there. Yeah, I know, it was very tricky. I knew it was a trick question. Oh, it's not that difficult to do. Hmm. I 
Maybe that would be a good way to do it, because then I wouldn't have to, um, on on a development side, I could just run that from the command line, like when I'm like, oh, what was the world seed for blah, blah, blah. You know, I can be like, map for Xanadu, or whatever. Just make a little command for that. Instead of having to go and change my saves.txt, rerun it, and all, and rebuild it. Thank you, Pixel Jum. Cheers, man. Okay, so now I should be hiding the correct fade layer. <laughs> fade layer is kind of a bad name for a global. Very common word. I really gotta up my Vim game. I need to go um, try NeoVim. I wanna try Clang Complete. Okay, wait, so that didn't help, basically. Setting the fade layer to invisible. Oh, but it also did not stop any actions that are running on it. What the heck is going on? Why is this background black? So none of this helped, so basically it wasn't this. What the hell is going on? It's weird because it's like if it affects everything that is at a low Z. A family could dodge bullets. Uh. What's NeoVim? It's just, um, it's the same exact, it's the code they took from Vim. Basically, Vim is a old, dirty code base. Um, and <laughs> there's a, there's a crew of people that are like, you know what, we need to fix up the Vim code base for the future, and there needs to be more than one developer. Vim was all made by one guy, one person, and, um, so basically, there's a lot of issues with that. So they made NeoVim. And what's really cool about NeoVim is they, they basically, it's the exact same thing as Vim. It's just with a souped up engine. It can run things faster. It can run things in the background and do things that Vim cannot even do. And you basically just re you just reset your whole system. So basically, you're still using the Vim work command. You're just actually running the NeoVim exe. Is it hard to traverse a huge code base? Well, this is not huge. If you've seen some projects, some projects seriously have like, not just hundreds of source files, but we're talking thousands and tens of thousands of files, especially when you get into like web development. You can have like a, a code base that's like 100,000 files it's ridiculously huge that's big so Songbringer's not really that big but I know what you mean when it is like a hundred thousand lines of source code even that much it's spread over maybe 60 source files hundred thousand source lines or whatever that's still a lot to like kind of remember but I don't know since I'm the one that programmed it all I kind of remember how everything works and where everything is. How do you run PHP? You need you need like a PHP tutorial. Yes, you can. Yeah, you can. There's a command for that. 
is the PHP command. I believe it's like, I don't know, it's dash C or dash D or dash A or something like that. And then you give it the source file. I don't know. Do you use your man page, man? Man PHP, that's all you need to do. Because you and there it is. Dash F. What's Google foo? I don't even know, man. I'm like an old school web developer. There's like so much, much new stuff by now, I'm sure. What is Google Foo? I don't even ever want to do web development again. It's Kung Fu, but Google Foo, yes! That's all it is. Oh, for man pages? Really? Is it for man pages and stuff like that? Tell me more. Okay, so none of this worked, which means I'm just gonna comment it all out and check this in because this is some progress. Okay, so I can check in the strings. Um, yeah, there's where I said attributes, said attributes, attributes. The fade layer, even though that didn't work. Do clearing effects, I guess that was important. Letterboxing. All right, good. So everything except for story. Data, game, strings, and source. Can you use Google Foo to find that? Oh, that guy go Google Foo. Oh. Nice. Nice Google Foo. Exactly. Google Foo. It's an important power. Rocket Bunny. Google Foo. All right, so this is um, outro cutscene structure. Okay, so now we figure out why the ground is all black. Too bad it wasn't that fade layer thing. I was like, God, maybe it's just the fade layers like on top of every. Wait, maybe it's fade layer thing is. Oh, I hope that's it. <laughs> right, isn't it? 99%. Yeah, you fixed your problems. Right on. That's so great to hear. While you were gone, we had some suggestions for you, but now. Wait, so fade layer is uh, said visible true. 
Right, so, oh, this needs to be set visible false here at the beginning. I don't need this visible all the time. Mercy. This is on done. Where's the on start? So we need to do this. This is next scene. Boy, the best salad dogs off the starboard. It's going well. How about yourself? Still wasn't it, huh? So... Huh. All right, but sweaty. Oh my god, damn. Oh. All right. There you go. At least it's only March, right? So I'm trying to figure out why this ground is all black. Really curious. I'm thinking like maybe there's something in the way because it feels like it's affecting a bunch of different things that are all below, below the Z zero. I already reset both the fade layers. It should be invisible. turning black. Wait a minute, what's it, what happens if... Legend of Mana? Really? Which one's Legend of Mana? I've played Secret of Mana, I've played Mystic Quest, the one before Secret of Mana. Um, I played the follow-up. Which one was the follow-up? Was it Secret Mana, Secret Mana 2? No. Was it Illusion of Gaia? I don't know. Well. I 
forgot to turn on the entities. Oh, it's the PlayStation 1 one. Oh, really? Which name? Oh, and these. There. 600, 974. Oh, it's just making entities. It's not helping. Oh, really? Oh my god. Forget to do it again. Captain Tusk? No way! Oh, he's literally a walrus? Oh, that's so funny, dude. I didn't know there was another character named Captain Tusk. Oh, man. That's great. Nine eighty nine. Nine seventy three. Yeah, it's not like the entities changed there at the end. It is. It's cool. Okay. Well, I guess the next thing to do is to figure out. Okay, the ground. Why is the ground? Is it disappearing, or is there something in front of it? I mean, it's running flux transition. Is there something in here that's... that would cause the ground to just disappear? I can't see anything in here. Ah. I don't think I don't feel like it's it's not that. I mean, I know Can we just do a regular segue? Oh, I guess that would be a good thing to test right now. We'll go find a, an area where I can do a regular segue and see if it still happens there because that will that will show me that it can run a flux without the ground going black. I think we need to go to like dungeon four to find one of these. Let's find out. Slugs, I don't have the sword. There's the Verloc. I think this one. Go this way. No, wait, wait, it's not here. Oh, 
hot doors in this, this dungeon. Ah, there it is! Ah, found it. Awesome. Okay, so we can kill this little mini boss fight. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so we can definitely run fluxes. Wait. Let's turn on story verbosity. Not running a flux here. Flux segue, right, yeah. Okay, so flux segue is a flux and it doesn't have the ground in all black, so it's not that it's a flux. Jeez. Alright. So that means maybe it is somehow actually disappearing. Or being deleted. How about looking at... Um, I feel like it's got to be flux cutscenes. Yeah, I'm going to start by just commenting everything out that I think that I can get away with. Wait a minute, this background layer. Wow, that is never ever used. Could have been that, dang. I hope that's it. Just a freaking black layer. That's like, uh, hopefully this is it.
Yeah! Oh, it worked! Yeah. Oh, it could have taken forever to debug. But it didn't. Okay, so I need to conditionally move um set the hero sprites invisible. That depends cuz um it basically depends, like, the flux outro doesn't do it. I'm trying to think of where this best belongs. Where to set the heroes invisible? Probably belongs in setup scene. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that belongs in setup scene. We can get rid of this whole do clear effects thing too. Yeah, so now each one of these areas, or I mean these different um, sections of the outro are conditionally doing things like clearing the forever effects or hiding the heroes, stuff like that. Just things that need to be done sometimes but not all the time. Okay, let's make sure that still compiles, and then run it again, make sure it still works for clearing the effects and hiding the heroes at the right time for the outro, 
And then I'll also make sure I didn't break the intro because this is the same subclass, parent class, I mean. All right, so I don't need Xcode anymore. Cause I fixed the bug, I fixed the bug. Finally! Cool, so each one of these scenes, I'll actually have to, you know, reprogram everything for the, the characters and the, what they do on each of these screens and stuff like that, but there'll be lots of outro-y things going on in each one of these scenes. And then the very end here, as start goes into this bit, this will be a different perspective of Planet Xera and showing the tower. And then I think this last one, I might show the tower again, moving across this whole screen as well, I'm not sure. Okay, this is great. We can check that in. I think that's actually, I'm gonna probably cut the stream short here. I'm kind of feeling tired today. It's already been an hour. I put in my, fine, go, you stayed your hour. Good. Oh, that's so great to have that background fix. Oh, let's just delete that background too. Dang. Get that out of there. This one. We're going to do this. What was that? We didn't need that. And I should also confirm the intro. So those characters there will be on the ground. This one will have Smith. This one will have Smith and Jib. And then some tower cutscenes and oh and a special cutscene if you've saved if you've saved the Smith. 
Okay, cool. So we got all the structure ready for the outro. This is really great to have this working. Right, so I got rid of that background. That's what that black thing was. And I restructured the way that the heroes are hidden. That goes in the scene. Um, the fade layers by default invisible. Very good. Mission accomplished. See you, Tig, later. I'm going to. Yep. Well, that's it for today's stream. Thanks a lot for watching. Everybody, everybody that's watched today. Everybody that's watching in the future. Hello, future people. I hope you're friendly. <laughs> See ya.